Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Jerk Chicken Wings. That's right, as you know, every year we try to do a new and exciting chicken wing recipe before the Super Bowl. And this year we're inspired by Jamaica's famous and incredibly delicious grilled chicken recipe, which is kind of funny because they don't play football in Jamaica. The big sport there is, of course, bobsledding. And while I do love this on grilled half chickens, it is beyond fantastic used as a hot wing recipe. So let's get started. I mean, these chicken wings aren't gonna be Jamaican themselves. And of course, the first thing we're gonna need is chicken wings. And there's mine, I have three pounds. And as you'll notice, there's no flats. This is made up entirely of the drumette part of the wing. And I usually don't buy this kind, I actually like the flat part of the wing. But these were on sale and will work beautifully. So I have three pounds of these. We're gonna go ahead and put those in a large mixing bowl because we're gonna marinate these, which is the next step. So in a blender, we're gonna start with some chopped onion, some whole peeled garlic cloves, and a handful of chopped green onions. And then to that, we're gonna add what I consider two of the most key ingredients, some habanero peppers, oh, they're hot, and some fresh thyme. And for the thyme, we're simply gonna pick those leaves off, that's easy. And then for the habanero peppers, all we're gonna do is chop those up roughly, but before we do, we're gonna to wanna to remove the seed pod, which is not hard, just cut them in half. And if you cut out that little top part where the stem comes into the pepper, that's where most of the seeds are gonna be located. And above and beyond removing the stem and seeds, you also probably want to remove most of those white membranes. That is where a lot of the heat resides. And these peppers are super hot to begin with, so I'm going to trim that out, although I will spare you watching that. All right, so we're going to trim those up, chop them up roughly, and throw those into the blender. And like I said, we're going to pick all the leaves off the thyme and add a good amount of that. You're going to want a couple tablespoons, very critical ingredient. And then after adding the vegetation, we're going to go ahead and spice this up. And for that, we're gonna use a whole bunch of salt, some freshly ground black pepper. Ooh, check it out, pepper sinkhole. After the black pepper, we're gonna add a whole bunch of allspice. Another signature flavor in this, do not skip or skimp on the allspice. We're also gonna want some dry thyme, which is not easy to see because I switched camera angles because I was getting bored of the overhead view. We're also gonna add some cinnamon and a little bit of cumin. And then last but not least for the spices, a whole bunch of freshly grated nutmeg. Oh, you gotta freshly grate it, everybody's doing it. So a healthy dose of nutmeg, and that's pretty much it for the spices, and it's on to the wet ingredients. So let's go ahead and add a splash of vegetable oil, along with a nice big drizzle of soy sauce. And then to balance out all these strong flavors, we're gonna need a little bit of brown sugar. And thanks to angry emails from psychotic pastry chefs, we are categorizing the brown sugar as a wet ingredient. And then after the sweet, we need the sour. In this case, we're gonna use a lime juice and a lot of it. And we'll squeeze that in, and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna go ahead and take that over and blend that completely smooth. And you know how we do, pulse on and off to start, and then we'll just go ahead and leave it on until it's completely smooth. And don't be in a big hurry. We want complete and utter liquefaction, which is what we have right here. And at that point, we're gonna go ahead and pour that over our chicken wings, and of course, give them a thorough mixing. All right, chicken wings are famous for their nooks and crannies. And we wanna make sure every speck of surface area is covered with that marinade. So be very thorough. And when you're confident that's happened, we're gonna go ahead and wrap that in plastic and marinate this overnight. Now that is what I'm officially recommending, but you can get away with as little as a two hour marinade. And I will let you know how that works on the blog. But anyway, we're gonna pop that in the fridge for at least eight hours. And then the next day we are ready to pan up and roast. And to do that, I'm gonna recommend you wrap a baking sheet in heavy duty foil. And I'm gonna give mine a little spritz with the canola oil. If you're using that nonstick foil, you probably don't need to do this. And then we're simply going to transfer the chicken wings from the marinade onto the sheet tray. And you can let a little of the excess marinade drip off, but you want these pretty wet. So we're going to place those on the tray. We're going to distribute them as evenly as possible. At that point, we're going to pop those in a preheated, very hot, 450 degree oven for 25 minutes. And by the way, do not throw away any of that extra marinade. We're going to go ahead and use the rest of that during this glazing process. So don't throw that away. And after 25 minutes, we're gonna pull those wings out and they should look something like this. And then what we're gonna do here is paint and turn. So take about half of whatever marinade you have left over, brush it onto the tops of those wings. And when you've brushed a little bit on each one, you're gonna go ahead and turn them over. And once we've completed that and they're all flipped over, we're gonna go ahead and pop that back in for another 15 minutes. We'll pull them back out and we'll repeat that process. Only this time we're gonna turn and then paint. And you can see we're starting to get a little bit of caramelization. All right, so the first time we painted and then turned, this time we're gonna turn and then paint. So we'll flip those all over. We'll paint those with the remainder of our marinade. And then those are gonna go back in for another 10 or 15 minutes until they're perfect. 
and you'll know they're perfect when they're all beautifully browned and caramelized and don't stop until they look like this. What happens is people see that excess marinade getting black around the edges and they stop. They chicken out like a bunch of jerks and they pull it out because they're afraid it's going to burn, but it won't. That's just the edges. So don't let those dark bits scare you. You have to cook these wings until they're well browned. And then one last tip, let them sit on the foil for five minutes before trying to remove them. As they cool a little bit, they'll contract and they'll come off that foil a lot easier. And at that point, you are free to transfer these into some kind of serving platter. I went ahead and cliched mine up with some crunchy plantain chips. And then in case anyone wanted a little additional acidity, I also put some small lime wedges. And I serve these as is. I don't think you need a dipping sauce, but that's up to you. You are, after all, the Peter Tosh of your nosh. And then, of course, it's time for the official taste. And as you'll notice, I'm grabbing the largest, most beautiful trophy wing. And that was just so unbelievably flavorful and delicious. It just has an incredible balance between the salty, the spicy, the sweet, the sour. Just absolutely addictive. If you were looking for a new and relatively exciting hot wing recipe for your Super Bowl party, these really were truly amazing. And I really hope you give these a try. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. <laughs>